Hey everyone, I'm Bert Wagner, and today I want to talk about XML and JSON in SQL Server 2016. For the past few months, I've been blogging a lot about the new JSON functionality that the 2016 version of SQL Server introduced. And I really like the functionality. I think it's really easy to use. I think it's really fast performance-wise, um, especially when compared to .NET. I have some articles uh, that I'll link above regarding that. But ultimately, right, JSON replaces XML, or it could replace XML. And even if I like using something, a new feature like JSON, the final test of whether I'm actually going to use it in production systems or not is does it do better than what the previous, you know, best choice was. In that case, it's XML. Um, XML support in SQL Server has been around since SQL Server 2005. Um, I personally do not like it, um, but it is fast, it is the standard, and so what I want to take a look at today is does the new JSON functionality do a better job um, than XML? So I want to go through a few series of tests comparing the performance of XML to JSON to see which one is faster and which one um, I'm going to want to use starting in 2016 and forward. So the things that I don't like about XML, right, it's really wordy. There's a lot of characters. If you look at an XML document string, it's got all these closing element tags, right, which are just redundant wasted space versus JSON. It gets rid of those. Um, it's a lot smaller um, in that aspect in character count. Um, I also don't like that XML has this idea of elements and attributes, um, which really, I mean, the main reason I don't like it is I'm lazy and I hate having to program for both instances, right? I have to program for how do I extract elements out of my data, and I have to program for how to get attributes out of my data. And so I, I just like JSON because it's just got properties and you pull them and that's it. Um, I also like JSON a lot because it's built into, um, or rather it's read by JavaScript really easily. And so, you know, whenever I'm doing web development, it's just easy to use. There's no conversions that need to take place. So I love JSON for all those reasons, but I am only willing to use it right in high performance situations if it truly is more efficient than XML. So let's take a look at some test data um, to compare the two. I have um, this XML versus JSON table, which I created here already. It's basically three columns. There's an identity integer column called ID. We have an XML data column, which is of SQL Server data type XML. And then we have our JSON data, which I'm storing in nvarchar max. Um, and all the JSON functions in SQL Server, they only work if you're dealing with nvarchar. So um, no special data type there, it's just nvarchar. That's where our JSON data goes. And here's all the data we're gonna, so we're just gonna insert one row of data for now. Um, it's basically an XML document and a JSON document of 19,000 plus cars of um, year, make, and model for each of those vehicles. Um, so we're just going to insert them all as one single entry. And if we take a look at what that looks like, you'll see here's our XML. Um, we have our root level cars element tag. And then for each of those 19,000 cars, we have these different um, you know, separate car elements. And same thing with the JSON. It's a giant array of cars data with your make and model for each one. And so the first test I want to look at is which one is smaller in size? Which of these two documents, the XML or the JSON, is smaller in size? Um, if we were just looking at string data, I would want to say, yeah, JSON is definitely shorter, right? XML has all those closing tags. It's a lot of wasted space. Um, but if we run this query here and run basically a data length function, we'll see that the XML data is almost half the size of the JSON data. Why is that? Um, it's because we're using the XML data type in SQL Server, right? So SQL Server doesn't store the XML as a string uh, on the server. It actually stores the important you know, hierarchy and values, it's called an info set, um, on the, and that's what it gets stored, right? So it's not storing all of those extra tags that you don't need, um, which is why the data size is a little smaller um, than what you would expect it to be. Versus JSON, it's just storing nvarchar, it's just storing the string, everything's there, spaces and all. So, um, you know, in this case, if you're using the XML data type, XML definitely wins in terms of storage size. It's a lot less smaller on the SQL Server. Now, if you're just storing your XML data on the SQL Server, right, like you have some application that's actually 
um, processing that data. You're not modifying anything on the SQL Server. You're just using it as a storage layer for your data. Um, and you're using either the nvarchar or the varchar data types to store that XML data. It will not have the benefit of um, SQL Server eliminating all those extra unnecessary tags. Um, and it will be bigger in size than the JSON um, that's also stored in that nvarchar type. So uh, just depends how you use it. If you are using the XML data type, though, it should be a smaller size than the JSON equivalent. Now, XML data type does have the nice benefit, right, of validating your XML data. It won't accept invalid XML data to get inserted. In contrast, the JSON and Varchar Max data type, it knows nothing about the data that you're putting into it. So if you put in invalid JSON data, it'll let you do it. Now, SQL Server 2016 has included different JSON validation functions like isJSON to help you validate your data. Um, it's just not an automatic process like it is with XML. So for the next test, I want to see how quickly um, do, do these different types of data insert into SQL Server. So I'm going to turn statistics on. And here all I'm doing is I'm using uh, this basically this numbers table. Uh, if we take a look, it's built-in system table. I've got numbers 1 through 100 here. And I'm just going to cross apply that with my one row of XML and JSON data. And so if we run that for XML, right here I'm selecting my XML data column. We'll see how long that takes to insert. If we scroll down, whoops, it took 783 milliseconds. If we go run the same query but for our JSON data column now instead, to insert 100 rows of that giant 19,000 card document, we've got 1,289 milliseconds. So the JSON is actually slower in this case than the XML insert. And part of the reason uh, for that, I'm guessing, is the XML, like I said, doesn't get stored as its entire original string. SQL Server kind of optimizes it, and so it's writing less data to the disk. Therefore, right, it's faster because um, there's less data to write. Um, so in this case, in terms of just storage and how fast it's able to write data, SQL Server does a better job with XML. Now, for the next examples, I want to take a look at what it's like to parse data. So instead of looking at the 100 rows in that table, all these examples are going to be looking at just our original single row of data. We'll look at some examples with more rows uh, towards the end of this video. So the first thing I want to look at is selecting our XML or JSON data. Um, in this ex first example, I'm going to select a fragment. So inside our, inside our cars element in our XML, we're going to take the first car and we're going to return that entire XML fragment um, from the first row only. So if we run that query, we'll see it returns just that one car element and all its children. And if we look at how long it took, we have 56 milliseconds for the total SQL Server execution time. The equivalent JSON query function um, of pulling the first car, and one thing to note is in JSON, everything's zero based. Um, with XML, it starts with one. So if we want to pull the first car of uh, data from our JSON data, we'll run this. And so once again, XML with 56 milliseconds, JSON to extract that same data is zero milliseconds, right? <laughs> really fast, um, way faster. Um, and spoiler alert, a lot of these JSON functions are faster than the XML equivalents. Um, and the reason for that, why that might be is if we actually include the execution plans on these guys, and we take a look at what's happening on the SQL Server. We'll see that the this top execution plan is for our XML query. Right, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, and that goes back to uh, whoa, that goes back to the way that SQL is actually storing that XML data. It has to kind of recombine it back into the string that it displays in the result set. Because um, that's not how it's being stored on the server. So I'm, there's some overhead there, um, as kind of shown by the execution plan. Whereas the JSON data, it's already stored just as that nvarchar max JSON string. It just you know finds the correct elements in there and returns them back to us. So it's a lot quicker. For our second test, if we take a look at extracting a value. So once again, from that first car, we want to extract, let's say, the model value. Um, so with our XML, we run this, and we get um, total execution time of 107 milliseconds. In JSON, we run the same thing, or 
equivalent version of the query, um, you know, it ends up being zero milliseconds. So um, once again, way faster running this um, in JSON rather than XML. Um, and these are unindexed columns. We'll take a look at the end of how the different XML indexes and the JSON indexes affect the performance as well. But just for pure shredding or parsing of data, JSON wins. Now, let's take a look at inserts, right? So if we want to insert this mileage element into our XML, we're using our insert syntax, and we're going to insert into that first car. So we'll run that, and we get a, our, um, our time here is 255 milliseconds. If we run the equivalent JSON query here to insert our mileage property of 100,000 miles, right? it comes back in 20 milliseconds. So once again, way faster. And just to verify that we inserted that data, if we go in here and take a look, right, there's our mileage element in our XML, and here is our mileage property in our JSON. So um, besides just the performance of um, these JSON functions being faster than the XML functions, I think they're a lot easier to use, right? I mean, if you look at this query, I always have to look up on MSDN what the syntax here is for the XML um, modification queries, whether they're inserts or updates or deletes. Um, I just, maybe I don't use it enough, but it's not intuitive to me. For JSON, this J JSON modify function, it's really basic, right? It works for inserts, updates, and deletes. It works just like a replace function. So remembering the syntax is really easy, right? You pick your JSON data column, you're saying what property to find or create, and then what value you want to put in there or replace. So um, not just performance, but from a usability standpoint, I think the JSON um, functions are a lot easier to use. Next, if we take a look at the update, right? So we're going to replace that 100,000 mile um, value that we just inputted with 110,000 miles. If we do that in our XML, That'll run. We check our execution time, 226 milliseconds. If we uh, do the equivalent in JSON with our nicer syntax as well, right, it gets done in 57 milliseconds. So easier to write, easier, um, faster to run as well. And we should be able to see here, right, there's our mileage, 110,000 miles, and in our JSON, 110,000 miles as well. So if we now take a look at our deletes, right? So going through our whole circle of CRUD operations, um, here's our deletes. If we're gonna delete that mileage element that we just created, right, run through here, 197 milliseconds. Um, if we run it on our JSON, 67 milliseconds, right? Four times as fast almost. Um, and comparing or just viewing, verifying that they did in fact delete, there we go, our mileage element is missing. Same thing with our JSON. So um, looking at just these standalone parsing and modification functions, the JSON versions of these functions uh, definitely beat out the XML functions um, by a, a pretty good factor, I would say by three or four times as fast. So you know, if you're running these functions on millions of rows, tens of millions of rows, um, the JSON functions will definitely, you'll see a, a significant performance uh, boost from using those instead. So finally, I want to take a look at um, another example of maybe parsing data out using indexes. So the XML data type has its own special kind of index, um, has two different types, primary and secondary indexes. Um, and basically, so let's, let's create a new uh, set of data with a lot more rows in it. Um, what I did for the second data set is we still have our same kind of uh, layout for our table. We have XML data and JSON data. But what I did was I inserted each element, right, each vehicle, each car gets put onto its own row. So instead of having 19,000 cars in one XML document or one JSON document, I split those out so there's 19,000 rows of XML cars and there's 19,000 rows of JSON cars. So if we take a look at that data, this is what it looks like. So our, JSON, uh, our XML data, sorry, is one car per row. And the same thing down here, if we take a look at JSON, is we have one car per row. Um, so now if we go ahead and index our data, um, I'm just gonna run this here. 
So if I go ahead here and run uh, the statement to create my primary index on my XML data column, that'll run and it'll get created. Um, I'm also going to create this secondary index. And in my testing, I couldn't actually get the secondary index to get used by the query um, engine. I'm guessing it's just this table's too basic, too simple. Um, and I couldn't, couldn't get it to trigger. So it won't be used, but I've included there in the, in the code in case you want to look at it. Um, I'm also going to add an index to our JSON column. And the way that works is we need to add first a computed column here, um, which is non-persisted. And the last article I wrote actually goes into depth about how this works, so I'll link to that above. Um, but we first just have to create our computed column on our make property, and then we're going to add our non-clustered index on that computed column, which I called make computed here. And so now if we run our data, we should see if we write our uh, against our XML data, we're selecting where our car makes are equal to Acura. This will return our rows. We got 96 rows down here. And we'll see, right, this query ran in a quarter of a second, 256 milliseconds. Um, if we take that equivalent query in JSON, same result set, 96 rows, but this data ran in 64 milliseconds. So from the performance standpoint of selecting data, if you are using indexes, uh, JSON is much faster as well at getting to the data that you need. So in conclusion, is it better to use XML or JSON going forward, right? Um, I would say if your server is experiencing lots of uh, inserts, a lot of data writing, and lots of data storage, um, and data storage isn't something that's easy for you to get, um, the XML data type right, does store data a little bit more efficiently. It is faster at writing that data. So if you need that, lots of transactions, um, you know, XML wins in that case. But if you don't need that, um, JSON's the way to go, right? The JSON functions in SQL Server 2016 blow the XML functions out of the water, right? They're way faster. Not only that, they're a lot easier to write. Um, just the syntax form, the different method signatures are a lot easier for me to remember so I don't have to constantly look them up. Um, and I just think they're easier to use, especially with indexing. It's much more straightforward than having to create different types of XML indexes. Um, so along with all the other reasons I mentioned at the beginning of this video of why I like JSON, going forward, I'm definitely you know, moving away XML when I can. JSON is a great candidate to store your serialized string data. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time.